what we we're both sort of twenty one and twenty two now, aren't we? Years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, f- fitness, fitness is everything that we've done all of our adult lives from the age of sixteen till till now. Yeah. You know, I certainly haven't ever trained to look aesthetically good in any way, shape, or form. I just need to be able to do the job. And, and, and what, you know, when we met, we were going straight into doing some fairly hard graft, weren't we? Very hard graft, I would say. Yeah, I mean, but then again, it's not all about going down the gym, pumping iron, cutting up. It's just making sure that you are robust enough to do the job. The job that we did, you know, being in the Royal Marines, you had to be able to, you had to be able to cut the mustard, and that was about going and training and being conditioned to hardship while still being physically fit. So you might not look at that. You might not look aesthetically. Um, <laughs> it, you know, you're not ripped, but you can, you know, you can put a, a rucksack or a bergen on your back. You can do ten miles to get to the fight. You can have the fight. You can, you can bail out. You can do, you know, your cliff assault. You need to be robust enough to be able to do all of these different events, right? Well, I mean, what did Royal Marine Commando training consist of? You did IMF to begin with, which is Initial Military Thwi- Fitness or Swedish yeah. PT. Swedish well, PT you, stuff. Yeah, you don't think it's doing anything, but it is. It's, it's, it's conditioning you to move on to the next phase, which is then, what was it, battle physical training or, or BPT, yeah. whatever BPT. that was. And that was starting to become more military. You're wearing boots, you're wearing combat equipment or combat clothing carrying stuff around and then you know you move on to the assault course and you move on to the endurance side of things with regard to long speed marches and so it's predominantly it's predominantly been fitness as a byproduct of the job that we have been doing i still think it is now though isn't it if you look at what you're doing you're up and down mountains and climbing into volcanoes weird (laughs) and uh (laughs) No, L- but that, lugging, lumping lots of heavy kit around whilst trying to stay switched on to look after film crews or look after yeah. yourself. And well, that's the thing. You, you, you can't, you know, you can't be injured. I can't be so lean and so ripped and so fit that, you know, by picking up, you know, fifty kilo rucksack or, or bit of kit, that's then going to put my back out or, or, you know, render me useless for the for the rest of the shoot. But do do you think you the way that you train has changed over the years? Um, I don't think it's changed. I'll tell you what, the way I train hasn't changed because ultimately I get bored very quickly. I still have the mind <laughs> of a child. So I need, to, I need to mix it up. So I do enjoy, you know, chucking some runs, do some hit training, do weights, do some old school strength training, then go out and mix it up again because otherwise I'll just get bored. Like that session we did um, two mornings ago, um, down at the gym was was brilliant, and I haven't done some of that stuff in in ages, and and probably won't do again. But again, it's you never know, like when you're on the shoot or, or I'm on a shoot, what you're going to come up against, and, and what type of fitness that you might need for that. I think a lot of it comes down. I mean, it's good to mix it up. I love doing stuff that's different. I think that hasn't changed. What has changed is I need to be a lot more disciplined the older I get, because it is easier to just say, ah, oh, maybe not. And you have to, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, hang on a minute, get up now, do it as hard as that is, and focus on, like before I even start training, focus on the feeling of having just finished that session. You're like, ah, I feel awesome now. So you're basically getting chased awake in the morning by the fear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Champing yeah. at the bit to it's get. Ch- yeah. <laughs> Control that fear, I can't, it's chasing me. Your belly's going <laughs> to get you. But I mean, and, and, and so like, what, what does your, what does phase, we'll call it, when you go to the gym, what, what does your fizz look like now? What's what's a typical foxy circuit? <sighs> Mate, it could be anything. It could involve like a f- some sprints. It could involve, obviously I always do a bit, I try to do, and this is because of some friends of mine as well that I've trained with. I now try and implement a very good mobility warm up, which is just movement, you know, just yeah. getting my body used to moving again, especially if you're starting early in the morning. Yeah. And then it can be a mix of anything, a bit of hit training, maybe just go into some deadlifts, you know, get the, get all the muscles firing, then mix it up with a few other bits and pieces. But it has to be varied for me. For me as well, it's about being fit for purpose. It's about, it's not aesthetics for me. It's about being able to do this job into my 50s and into my 60s. And and that to me is is about, like you say, mobility, stretching. Um, And it's it's about training hard and, and, you know, 
having the fear to, to push us on. The point being, though, if you look at your job, your career now and, 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 and mine, it, it's about you have to be in a certain condition that if something does go wrong, you're able to react to it and, and not be fatigued by what it is that you're doing to put something right. A perfect example of that is we, when we rode across the Atlantic from, from Portugal all the way over to Venezuela, you and I had not, and the team, you know, we hadn't rowed really a boat before. We hadn't done rowing specific training. Um, really, we were just at, a, I would say, a general standard of fitness. <laughs> to then get in a boat and row two hours on, two hours off for nearly two months. I mean, that's, you know, that's what, to me, fitness is. It's about being able to expand my horizons by allowing me to do more things. But we, you know, we... Even when we're on our off period, you know, our off season, the tra when, we, we, when we talk about training, I still, we still both tick over, don't we? We still do, yeah. you know, we, we, even though we say we're resting, we're not really. I'm still going to the gym and doing tick over fizz. And then once I've had the period that I need to chill a little bit, I'll then go back into it. And I know you do. And it's about mixing it up and keeping on it. And that's, that's the thing. It's always easy. There'll always be something that gets in the way. But I'm, I'm 42 now. <laughs> Um, and th there are more and more things getting in the way of, of training, but it's, it's a discipline. I feel like, like you were saying about setting that alarm clock, get up, get on with it. And, and, you know, once you've done those initial steps, then you're into a good place. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when we were in Colombia mm. and we were living in that, I mean, we were living in a coastal town called Bonaventura, do you remember? And it was, you know, it's not a nice place. It's, it is dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous. We lived in a hotel. There was no, nothing that we could use for training, but we found that. Kids just climbing frame. Yeah, it was a climbing the frame, wasn't it? And, and yeah. I mean, that was that was some of the fittest. That was probably one of the fittest times that I've been in the last few years. And you know, we're out shooting fifteen-hour days, but we're still managing a <laughs> fairly stressful environment. Still managing to get get the exercise. We were in. squeezing it in, weren't we? we yeah. And all that was was body weight stuff. Do you remember? Yeah. We had we had we did have a we had a suspension trainer. Yeah. We lashed that onto the pull-up bars or the monkey bars, and then we just did everything around that. Yeah. I remember we were in good nick in Colombia. You know, mm. we were, oh, I suppose we needed to be because I was waiting for it to kick off at any moment <laughs> in time and I'd have been out of there <laughs> climbing over buildings and all sorts. But physical health is, is, you know, one thing, but mental health, that's like you've, you've recently sort of gone quite public about mental health and campaigning about keeping a good solid head game. I left the military because I got medically discharged for PTSD. Now, people are, there's a lot of people like, well, PTSD, what is that? You know, that must be something that soldiers suffer from or, or maybe people in the emergency services or people that have got jobs that are close to seeing traumatic stuff. But I think it can happen to anyone and it probably does happen to everyone. You know, mm. you can get, you can be traumatised by everyday life. Life in general is actually hard work. Fairly traumatic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, and there's like stuff happens and you might not be ready for that and, all it is, all PTSD is in my in my mind, in my opinion, is a natural reaction to something happening in your life. What, what, and, and you can't say it's not a natural thing because it happens to you involuntarily. That means your body is wanting to react like that to a yeah. certain given point in time because of something. Whether it's a car crash, whether it's military career, whether it's being a footballer or a professional athlete and your career is finishing, you know, that is a stressful moment in someone's life it seems like certainly over the years it, it, it's such a it's very difficult to put a one size fits all you know on ptsd and how you deal with that what that looks like what does it look like for someone well, else? i think it's a little more complicated than a than a physical injury because it is bespoke to that one person and their their life is different to ev all the other billions of lives on the planet so it's going to manifest itself in its own way and so whatever you need to do to manage that and hopefully fix it is it should be driven by you but you also need to have the determination want and desire to fix yourself as well difficult. otherwise you'll be stuck in limbo yeah so i guess that could be quite difficult is that yeah. self-awareness or that that realization that you do need to look out for yourself would you would you is, is the first port of call for someone that is suffering with that is, is understanding or realizing that that isn't I think it? it's difficult. It? I think it's difficult for different people. Like when you look at the, I mean, I you know I know you well. I reckon, if I'm honest, you struggled mentally with leaving the military and some of the stuff that happened to you in the military. 
I'm, I'm just being mm. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you could say that you had undiagnosed PTSD or, or, or something like that, which, is, which isn't embarrassing, it's just what it yeah. is. And, yeah. and actually, people keep going about, on about what's the aftercare like when military life finishes, and it, it's not that it's bad, because if you look at what the organisation is, at the, when, especially when we left, the MOD, it's, a, you know, it's missions and its goals that are just, they're on another level. Yeah. And actually, you know, looking after, you know, How can you physically look yeah, mental yeah. health for soldiers is just an, un it's an unfortunate byproduct of the job. Yeah. Obviously, over time, it's expected that there's an aftercare in place and, that, that, and there is now. And there's also other charities out there that help support that. So I think, you know, people are like, what do they do? They're trying to do as much as they can, but they still also have a job to do, which is great that there are these other organisations and charities that help to fill that gap. And without them, you know, we'd be in a, in a much dire, a more dire situation. But a lot of it comes down to having the presence of mind as a person to be like, I feel differently about stuff yeah. and I need to explore that. It's just, you just got to be a little bit more curious as to what's going on. Is there, any, is there any sort of, um, like, have you come up with any systems that work or any, that works for you? I know it'll be different for, for other people. Is there, is there anything that, that you can have come up with yourself that's coping mechanisms that's helped you sort of? Um, people keep saying to me, oh, you, you know, are you all right? And I'm like, y yeah. They're like, well, you know, you never fix yourself. And I'm like, yeah, you do. You just, you know, you, you can if you want to. You've got, you've got, you know, stuff that's happened in the past, which is essentially how mental health comes about. It's happened, it's in the past. You've got to find a place in your head where you can be like, right, that's that. Be a bit more compartmentalised, not ignore it, not sort of brush it to one side, but acknowledge it. Realise that you've, you're in a position where you're feeling different and then explore that. Like, I know I know, we, we both do it because we speak about it, but, you know, if I wake up in the morning and feel differently, you know, whether it, if it's a Monday morning and pretty probably feeling down like most people is a Monday morning <laughs> yeah. but what I'll do is I'll sit you know I'll give my I'll give myself the respect I deserve and give myself a bit of headspace to actually explore why I, why I feel I'll sit on the end of bed and be like why do I feel a bit down and like work it out and give yourself five ten minutes and you probably work it out you know it might be because I need to pay a bill yeah or I know that I've got something coming up that I'm not really looking forward to so just you know get myself around that do it then once you've done all those things paid bills sorted out stuff that you don't really want to you probably find out that you feel a bit better, or maybe it's just as simple as going for a walk, or go to the gym, or have a cup of tea. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, just break that just, thought process. Yeah, or yeah, and, and give yourself the the time. Respect your own mind. In the and instead of like ignoring it, trying to ignore it, and then going and spending the rest of the day being miserable as sin, running around town, being grumpy with everyone. It's not great, you know. Try and try and nip it in the bud early. And I mean, we we chat quite a lot about how we're feeling and, and what we're up to, and you know, we we do. You know, as examples, we we do fairly stressful jobs. We did the the sort of narco's job, and, and and you know we were filming in Colombia, fairly high stress, Peru, Mexico, cartels, hitmen, gangs. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't mind saying that was pretty stressful, and yeah. and although you know we were in control of all the things that were happening, even these little things do take a toll on you when you come back and you're trying to readjust back into to normal life and normal work and you know i think the biggest thing is is talking and chatting it seems to be the most simple solution but yeah. it, it's it's finding that headspace to be able to recognize that you like you say are not feeling right and then talk to someone yeah but we i mean we do it and uh, uh, some people i hear the conversation where it goes oh but you're not you know how do blokes remain grizzly blokes i'm like I'm, you know, I speak to you. We, we do some pretty gnarly stuff. And it's not that we're being a little bit less of a man. We're just allowing ourselves time to talk to each other about how things are going and just giving each other a bit of respect and talking about how we feel. I do it with other mates of mine, yeah. other mates of mine who are seen as hardened individuals, but we can still talk. We're not losing our manlyhood or anything. No. Well, you, you're actually, what you're doing is you, you're, pro, you know, you're, you're sort of prolonging your health, physical yeah. health. And, because it is... Uh, you know, it, it seems like there is a direct correlation between poor or bad mental health and physical health, and then into physical fitness. You know, this that it's all fairly, it's all fairly linked across. Well, it's all the in world. the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's all, it's all in the same <laughs> capsule. <laughs> <laughs>